Welcome to the Flag Bearer Channel. This is Little Known Black History Facts. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel. The Golden Age of Black Entrepreneurship, 1900 to 1930. The Golden Age of Black Entrepreneurship refers to a period of remarkable growth and success among Black-owned businesses in the United States, particularly during the early 20th century and especially from the 1900s to the 1930s. Segregation forced Black people to work together and become self-sufficient. This era followed the Reconstruction period and came at a time when segregationist Jim Crow laws were widespread. Because Jim Crow laws forced African Americans to form more insulated communities separate from whites, it led to a boom in entrepreneurship. Despite pervasive racial discrimination and economic barriers, black entrepreneurs found ways to establish thriving businesses and communities, fostering both economic independence and pride within the black community. Owning land and businesses was the norm in most families in the South. It was known as the golden age of black business because businesses owned by African Americans were growing faster than ever at this time. With racial division harshly dividing communities of color from their counterparts, predominantly African American communities were often left to fend for themselves. Many of the businesses started by African American entrepreneurs had one primary goal, to serve the black community. Banks, barbershops, restaurants, insurance companies, clothing stores, etc. filled the needs of their customers and created a large number of jobs, effectively building wealth within the communities of color. Black entrepreneurs have a history of overcoming great obstacles and creating something from nothing. All entrepreneurs and innovators share the legacy of overcoming significant obstacles of assembling finite resources. Within two decades of the abolition of slavery, African Americans established several thousand successful businesses that thrived in exclusively African American communities. During this golden age, black-owned businesses flourished, including small local shops, insurance companies, financial institutions, manufacturing companies, and beauty enterprises. As white-owned businesses scaled back or eliminated their ties to black customers, black entrepreneurs were only too happy to take those customers from them. From 1900 to the 1960s, the term double duty dollar was used to describe the idea that money spent at businesses that hired blacks was doing two things, making the business money and advancing the black community. All across the country in urban areas where the majority of black people lived, small businesses were popping up at record speed. The number of black businesses of all kinds doubled to 40,000. Neighborhoods like Bronzeville, Sweet Auburn, The Ville, and Black Wall Street were home to these businesses, and black women were killing the game too. Annie Turnbull Malone and Madam C.J. Walker dominated the cosmetics industry. They were among the first black millionaires in the United States. Malone helped create over 75,000 jobs, mostly for black women. Companies like North Carolina Mutual Life Insurance and Atlanta Mutual Insurance ensured financial security for black families. A key example is the rise of the Greenwood District of Tulsa, Oklahoma, where it became one of the most prominent concentrations of black wealth and enterprise. The emergence of an affluent black community in the Greenwood District at the turn of the 20th century was quickly nicknamed Black Wall Street and it served as the perfect example of the entrepreneurial success by black people intersecting with the blatant racism that was prevalent in American culture. Many African Americans moved to Tulsa's Greenwood District with the hopes of distancing themselves from racial oppression in the South and providing a better education for their children. In a time when black ownership was exceedingly rare, African-American landowner O.W. Gurley purchased 40 acres of land in 1906 and started the first black business in the district, a boarding house where many African-American migrants found refuge. 
Over time, Greenwood grew to house a variety of thriving black businesses, from clothing stores, barbershops, and doctor's offices, to restaurants, theaters, and nightclubs. Gurley himself owned at least 100 businesses of his own and even loaned money to aspiring business owners to help them bring their ideas to fruition. Unfortunately, on May 31, 1921, the Tulsa Massacre began. Building smoke enveloped buildings as white mobs torched and bombed houses, stores, and churches. By the time the dark clouds cleared, about 1,000 homes and businesses were demolished and about 300 black Greenwood residents were killed. Today, the Greenwood District has yet to recover, but its rich history contributed greatly to the golden age of black business. Black entrepreneurs contributed to a self-sufficient economy. Booker T. Washington's promotion of economic self-reliance also encouraged black entrepreneurship during this time. In 1900, Booker T. Washington founded the National Negro Business League. The league supported black entrepreneurs and helped them start and grow their businesses. 600 chapters were established across the United States. Washington believed that part of the solution to achieve racial and social equality was to encourage and increase the number of African American entrepreneurs and businesses. While speaking at the league's first meeting, he reminded the hundreds of delegates that the strive for economic growth was simply not for material gain, but as a means of aiding black people in securing their rightful place as citizens and to provide opportunities for securing the necessary education for development. Some notable black entrepreneurs of this era include Annie Turnbull Malone, who was the first black woman millionaire. It was she who hired Madam C.J. Walker and taught her the hair business. Around 1900, Malone developed her own chemical straightener and created an entire line of hair care products for black women. In 1902, she and three assistants began selling her products door to door in St. Louis. Malone built a beauty, hair care, and cosmetic empire under the Poro brand and established branches in major U.S. cities, Canada, the Philippines, the Caribbean, South America, and Africa. In 1918, she built Poro College, a multi-story building that housed the business offices, training facility, operations, and public gathering spaces for the local black community. Madam C.J. Walker Widely regarded as the first female self-made millionaire in the United States, Walker built a beauty and hair care empire that catered specifically to black women. A.G. Gaston, a businessman and investor, Gaston built a multi-million dollar empire in insurance, real estate, and financial services, and he became one of the wealthiest black men in America. Charles Clinton Spaulding, co-founder of the North Carolina Mutual Life Insurance Company, which became the largest black-owned insurance company in the United States and one of the most successful black businesses of its time. Maggie Lena Walker was the first African-American woman to start a bank. She also founded a newspaper and a department store. This era is significant because it demonstrated the resilience and ingenuity of black entrepreneurs in overcoming systemic oppression and creating vibrant economic ecosystems. However, the destruction of communities like Black Wall Street and other challenges, such as the lack of access to capital and institutional racism, ultimately slowed the growth of many black owned businesses in later decades. After the civil rights movement, and desegregation and integration took effect, many black customers left the black businesses and began going out of the community for their goods and services. This was the ultimate death blow as the smaller black businesses were often not able to compete with the larger businesses that now allowed black customers. Until next time. If you like little known history facts as I do, please like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Press the bell to be notified of future uploads. Thank you for watching.